Hello, my name is Michael O'Keefe, a.k.a. The Movie Wizard. If you enjoyed this interview and want to hear more top-notch film industry conversations, please press the thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell to stay in the know. Greg Sestero, welcome back to Ottawa. It's great to be here. Yes. So, last time I talked to you, I'm not going to lie, I was kind of like a room skeptic. With all, all the mythology, all, all the, the, the screenings, I was kind of one of these guys, like, oh, well, there's a lot of dumb movies, you know, why, why is this one so special? And then, but then, you know, there, there's this thing called the, the Jerusalem Syndrome. Yeah. You know, you go to Israel, and you're convinced you were in, like, the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I met you, we sat down, and I was kind of convinced I was, like, a secret character, a hidden character in the room. Okay. Do you have this effect on people sometimes? Um, I, yeah, I'm starting to hear that more and more, <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I did. <laughs> yeah. It certainly happened with me. So, I very simple question, but kind of a maybe a longer answer. Um, how did the release of The Disaster Artist change your life? It was incredible. I mean, that was the last time I was here. It was a few days before mm -hmm. it was coming out. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, there's, it just got so much love around the world. Uh, people got introduced to the story through The Disaster Artist, which is a great film. And it helped people understand you know, myself and Tommy in, in the room, and it was amazing. I mean, the, the book, people loved then rediscovering the book and talking about the story and obviously going and winning a Golden Globe and having the book be nominated for an Oscar was one of those things where it just, it makes you realize that anything is possible hmm. and, and even the most insane thoughts you have, like <laughs> no way this can ever happen, that, you know, it possibly can if your heart's in the right place. So, I uh, met so many great people, got to travel the world, and uh, it just it pushed me now to say, you know what, don't don't care so much about pleasing mm -hmm. people what they want. Just you know, it was like the book, like nobody really wanted the book. Uh, just go out if you want to tell stories and, and make art. Just go out and do it for those reasons, and uh, it was very liberating. Nice. So I gotta ask you specifically, you're a humble guy, but when you were watching the Oscars. You watched the Oscars, obviously, when, when when the Disaster Artist was nominated for Best Scripts. You must have. I don't. I think I. You didn't. I, I think I missed it. Oh, Tim! I was going to ask you what what it was like to see, hear your name announced, but um, uh, but maybe you don't remember. I guess when I, I saw the yeah. clip later, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it was read by Black Panther by uh, Chadwick Boseman who played Black Panther. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was, you know, again, it, it was such a long journey to get there. I was telling Lee DeMar, who, who runs mm. the Mayfair, yep. uh, it was eight years ago that I was here really for the first time when the tour kind of started, mm. and I was just getting started on the book, and so it was such a long journey, you know, to get there and have it be nominated for an Oscar that, uh, again, it, it was very surreal, and, and it meant a lot, and it, it just kind of pushed me now to say, hey, you know what? Nothing is 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 off the table, you know. Go out there and, and and try to make some good films now. Okay, yeah. So, um, I want to rewind a little bit though. So, Golden Globes goes down, and hashtag Times Up is like a big thing, and but then the the Franco allegations start happening. What what, what was it like in Team Tommy when when that started going on? You know, it was it was one of those things that happened at a at a random time, mm. and. Uh, you know, I really, I really feel that James, uh, his performance was really fantastic, and he's the one who who saw the potential in the story and really pushed to get it made. And I really felt, uh, both Tommy and I felt that he deserved to be nominated for an Oscar. And so I think, yeah, I think we're definitely disappointed that he didn't get that reward. But um, you know, we're still very thankful to, for the experience of the Golden Globes. And mm. uh, I mean, I just hope uh, everybody's. Everybody's cool. Okay. Uh, fair enough. So I really enjoyed Best Friends, and I finally saw Volume 2. Loads of fun. <laughs> uh, they, they really work. Like I think it's like uh, my co-host was kind of explaining it to me. Like You can watch one and two, or you can watch just one. But it, it's a little weird to, to just watch two. It's okay, like, okay. you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, they're, so they were written as one film. Right. Best Friends was written as one film. We shot it pretty much as one film. Mm. And then realized there was just so much there. And, and what I liked about part one is that it's very much a reunion movie between Tommy and I. So yeah. you have moments that go on a little strangely. Things happen. Tommy being Tommy. Hmm. But you let that go because it's, it's a reunion film. And then yeah. I think part two kind of does more of the films that I want to make. It has some new characters that are, you know, equally insane. So... <laughs> 
Um, I just felt, it, it, you know, it doesn't happen where you end up making two films mm -hmm. in one. And I thought this was a unique time to just let it be two different films. Is the film kind of like, uh, I'm sure you want to like let some stuff like lie and let the audience figure it out. But I felt like it was maybe like you try to make amends after like writing that book with Tommy or like it, it, at least just looked at your relationship after writing the book. Is is there anything in there you could touch upon or is it kind of like kind of let it lie or let it like speak for itself or let I people think, read into it? I mean, it was inspired by a road trip that mm. Tommy and I took uh, years ago. Really random. He mm. thought I was going on this road trip with him to try to kill him. Right. <laughs> which I wasn't at all. And so right. <laughs> I started with that and I wrote out, you know, Tommy always looks upon himself as being like the leading man or the hero. Mm -hmm. and so this was a chance mm. to write a role for him that encapsulated everything that's interesting and, and quirky and funny about him and, and getting to take, giving him a role that, to take him seriously. And so that's, you know, obviously inspired by our friendship, but really trying to do something different from the room and, and write mm -hmm. something that puts us in a different universe that's equally bizarre. Yes. It's it's very fun, and I love the soundtrack. Was his name Daniel Platzman? Yeah, Daniel Platzman from yeah. Imagine Dragons did the score. Mm -hmm. um, we were really lucky to, to have his support. Mm -hmm. He was touring with Imagine Dragons and still being able to, to come through on the score. So, uh, yeah, that added a great mood to it. Mm, yeah, definitely. So tell me, what can you tell me about Big Shark? Is this kind of like a soft spot between Birdemic and Sharknado? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Tommy, um, he has a few ideas, so he, he's putting this, uh, he put this teaser out. And yeah. So he's still, uh, yeah, he's still, <laughs> he's still forming it, but... Um, okay. But yeah, no, he, um, always, he's always up for a fun idea. <laughs> it looks like fun, and there's that, there's, there's another guy, there's, who's the third guy? Oh, I think that's one of Tommy's friends that he's known for a while from New Orleans because he wants oh. to be based in New Orleans. So. Nice. Okay. <laughs> well, he, he's he is a New Orleans boy, right? He's from New Orleans. He's from New Orleans. <laughs> All right. So um, you're you're here to you're gonna watch the room again tonight, right? You're gonna be uh, at the screening. You know what? So we're gonna do Best Friends Volume One and Volume Two. Yep. And then the room, I think, comes on at midnight. Now, I've only seen the room like four times. In my life. <laughs> uh, I've seen Best Friends Volume Two like nineteen times. Okay. Uh, so the room is definitely on the on the lower part. But uh, yeah, we're going to be showing through Sunday night. We're going to be showing Best Friends Volume One, Volume Two, mm. followed by the room Q and A. Uh, I love the Mayfair. I love uh, yeah. the Ottawa crowd. It's been, I mean, I think it's been showing the room for like 120 yeah. years consecutively. Yeah, it's amazing. So. That's... Uh, yeah, so it's always it brings back great memories. In mm -hmm. fact, there's a shot of me at the Mayfair at the end of the Disaster yep. Artist on mm -hmm. the stage. So um, yeah, it's a it's great to be back. What what was what was there like? It was I really enjoyed reading the book after. Like I said, I I'm a character in the room. After I interviewed you, I got the book, and not only did I read the Disaster Artist, I just got back into reading books oh, that's because great. because of that. you. That's yeah, great. I'm reading. I got a book right here. I got Hitchcock and Truffaut. Oh, I got. I want to check that out. Yeah, 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 I got it in LA, and it. But it, it's like, I really just started reading this and like, a, like a, a dozen other books because of the disaster That's artist. Amazing. That's so yeah, cool. yeah, it's scripts and writing, and it's like, you. This it was a transformative moment That's meeting cool. Greg Sestero. Yeah, cool. absolutely. <laughs> you never know with 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 things, right? But um, what what was there from the book that you uh, maybe, maybe it didn't work for like the cut, but what what would be like a fun thing? that wasn't included in the film that you think could have worked? Uh, you know, I love the part where my mom meets Tommy. It's such a <laughs> climb, it was a, such a climactic point for me because they're both the two most important people. They both had accents. And mm -hmm. my mom said to Tommy, no sex. Right. So I, they left that out of the film for a good <sighs> reason. But I, I really thought that would have been a part in the movie that would have been crazy because that actually really happened. Up on someone's shelf. <laughs> <laughs> You are going over to the Mayfair, and they're going to be playing Best Friends, Volume 1, Volume 2, and you do, like, script readings of the room as well? Uh, I think that happens, yeah, later. Yeah, right. Yeah, to introduce the room. Yeah. Okay, very fun. All right, well, it's been a blast, as always, talking to you again. You're doing Best Friends Tour. And I'm also, uh, the next thing I'm really excited yep. to be working on is I'm writing a horror film. Oh, so I'm gonna be uh, working on that, and I don't know if, if you remember in Volume Two the the character uh, mm -hmm. Uncle Rick. Yeah, so of course he's, he's gonna be in uh, as well. So uh, I'm excited about that. Trying to do something really different. I love horror, and um, I hope uh, I can bring a few scares. 
I, I, well, that's good stuff. But thank you so much for dropping by. Great, right, thank you. Absolutely. All right, beautiful.